Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4. We have a new trailer for the Far Harbor DLC, or in true Australian fashion, Far Harbor. If you haven't seen the trailer already, I would suggest you check it out. I'll put a link in the description and on screen now. Watch it the whole way through because we will be pausing it a lot throughout this video and it's going to become very annoying if you're just trying to watch it. So the first thing we see is this boat coming into a town. I'm going to assume this is one of, if not the main town, that you will do most of your trading and traveling from. And instantly, all I can see is Point Lookout. Which isn't a bad thing, by the way. Please, bring my daughter home. Now there we hear a lady saying, bring my daughter home. So this entire DLC is based around finding Shawnette. In all seriousness, we don't know whose voice that is or who the daughter is. In this shot here, just getting forced down our throat is that this place is foggy. Now I'm an absolute sucker when it comes to good textures, so I'm over the moon to see that they have brought in bird shit textures for the rocks. We've paid our dues in blood and bullets. In this shot here we have what is I assume to be a whale skeleton. If you look down here, there's a metal barrel, which gives you some idea of the scale of this skeleton. There have been rumors and scripts found in the game's code after certain patches that would hint that there is something called a ghoul whale. Not that it is confirmed, but this could be very subtly opening the doorway to our minds that there are going to be ghoul whales in this DLC. This is our fight. Not that this is game changing, but as we can see in the background there, there is a well lit headland. Most of this trailer is nighttime, grim, foggy, no lights, really dense. So it is good to see that sometimes the sun can come out. And something else we see here is that the forests are actually quite dense, something we haven't seen in Fallout 4 yet. A genuinely thick, dense pine forest. Although the trees may be dead, it's going to create a completely different atmosphere for us. Now on the forums there have been speculation that this is a settlement. I don't think it is just because of the sheer scale of it. As we can see we've got this stuff in the foreground here and all the way over in the background there's a giant building there. So I don't think this is going to be a settlement building location. I just think it's the town that you come into at the start of the game. Our island. Here we get a shot of some very strange lights. Perhaps they will be a new addition to the workshop. I also want to point out what the hell is that shit on the ground there? It either looks like something that's rotting or is extraordinarily mutated and covered in slime and burnt skin or something. That definitely looks like a tail at the end there. I think that's an open mouth. That looks like some ribs. That looks like a leg. That looks like a tail. I don't know if this is one creature that's been broken into parts or three different creatures. Judging by the possible tail, it is very likely that this could be a gecko, but more on that later in the trailer. Not yours. Here again we see the kind of thick vegetation and the mist, of course. There's a question that needs to be asked. What the hell is this thing? Is this some fungus or are we gonna go back to the point lookout shit where there's like teddy bears and dolls hanging from trees? And up in the top left we will see something that isn't a tree. Although it is long, tall and thin, at the bottom we can see that it gets quite thick. Much thicker, much quicker. <laughs> than uh, any tree. So take note of that because I actually think we see it again later. This is a shot just showing off the sheer scale of the DLC. They did say that this DLC is going to be bigger in size, in terms of map size, than the Shivering Isles from Oblivion, but they also said that it's going to have less content than the Shivering Isles from Oblivion. So we can expect an interesting area to explore. Again, they're just pushing that it's really foggy. They're really highlighting this fog. And also, I'm not entirely sure if these are rocks or if they're Myalurks. Now in this shot here, we see a new armor set, which I do believe to be some kind of old school diving suit. Judging by the shape of the helmet, the big rivets in it, the pipes coming off it, and on the back of the armor, there's actually what seems to be some kind of air tank. So this suit could very well give us underwater breathing. And the only reason to give us underwater breathing is if there is some interesting things to explore underwater. Now in this shot here, it's good to see that they've brought back an Elder Scrolls creature, the Chorus. Personally, I'm not particularly familiar with Fallout lore and what creatures actually exist in the world, so I don't know what this is or what it could be. It looks to be some kind of insect derivative. It's got an exoskeleton, which insects have, and just under its mandible beak thing, there seems to be some kind of long spindly antenna. So I mean, really, it could be anything from some kind of mutated prawn or shrimp, to some mutated insect, to some kind of ultra I mean, who knows, really? The fog can do a number on you. 
Now in that line there, he says the fog will do a number on you. So far in most of the shots in this trailer, the fog has been one of the main focuses. So I don't know if that line is just, it means that there's so much fog that you go insane, or if there's something to actually do with the fog that will affect you while you're playing the game. Like if it's irradiated, if you get poisoned by it, perhaps huge thick fog comes through and creatures come through the fog. Where the fog goes, the creatures go. I don't know, but him saying that and pointing out that the fog will do a number on you makes me think that there's something more to the fog. In this shot here, we see a new set of armor, some kind of coats. Hopefully it's a unique set that I will most certainly acquire. And we also see a leather action rifle. It looks very similar to the Lincoln Repeater in Fallout 3, so we can expect this new type of rifle in this DLC. Please make a unique variant of this weapon. Now I don't know if it's just the lighting, but this dude in the back here, his face looks gaunt as. The contrast between the color of the skin on his face and his eye socket, which is just a big black hollow circle. Again, I don't know if it's lighting or if he's wearing a mask or he's some kind of new dude that we will encounter in this DLC. Get you all turned around. This is some kind of creature that's been influenced by anglerfish in real life. Now, because it's in the water, everyone instantly goes to Mylok, but look at its mouth. Mylokes don't have that mouth. And I actually think it's some kind of water-dwelling gecko. We do see some geckos in this trailer. And at the end, this fellow pops out and it looks kind of gecko-y. Bar Harbor. Here we see that Nick Valentine is definitely part of this DLC and will actually come with us to Far Harbor. On the right, we have the protagonist wearing a brand new fishing hat. And I also want you to take note of the pattern on the protagonist's left arm armor. Has a right to the truth. Now this is possibly the most irradiated thing I have ever seen in a Fallout game. Look at the color of that sky and the mist. It looks like a yellow highlighter. This doesn't seem to be Radstorms. Radstorms seem to be uh, darker and a bit more orange than this. This is very like fluoro green, almost fluoro yellow. It's pretty close to the color of a tennis ball. Now this could also be going back to the fog thing that it will do a number on you. I want you to have a look at the trees over here in the top left of the screen and also the ground here in the bottom middle of the screen. I'm gonna play this back and forth and watch how both the trees and the ground in these spots of the screen warp. See that, how it warps like the classic you're on drugs effect? So something's going on, whether it's poisoning or there's fog coming through, I don't know, but something strange is happening here. The people of Far Harbor need only peer out their windows to look upon the face of Adam. Okay, so let's stop it there for a second. We were introduced to the children of Adam being in the DLC. We already knew they were going to be in the DLC as part of the main plot and the conflict, but now we get to see them. And that helmet is mine, by the way. <laughs> as soon as possible, that guy's being killed and I'm wearing that helmet. And here we get to see some kind of children of Adam settlement based city. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, they normally go to a very irradiated area to set up their bases and this dude's facing straight ahead and these two people here are facing downwards like 90 degrees the opposite way to the guy in the foreground of the shot which makes me think this base might be in like some kind of nuclear reactor underground as they do seem to be praising something in the middle of this building or this area and there's you know steam coming up so something's going on in this building we get to see these cool new lights these like strings of light bulbs I don't know if these are going to be buildable in the settlement and the workshop, but they do exist and they look pretty cool. And once again, I would like you to take note of the pattern on these banners here, because that pattern leads into the next shot. Himself. Okay, here, again, foggy, would you believe it? But how cool is this? Some kind of new armor, and that looks very much like a power armor helmet, but it's not on a power armor suit. As we can see the gap there between the chest piece and the left arm piece, we can see the blue jumpsuit underneath. So these are bits of armor instead of a suit of power armor. So I don't know if this is some kind of super refined power armor thing, like some kind of stealth suit, like we saw in New Vegas and Fallout 3. Maybe it's some kind of ranger suit, like we saw in New Vegas. On the front of the helmet, there does seem to be some kind of uh, filter, like we see on a gas mask. So maybe this suit will help you with the heavy irradiated fog that we will encounter in Far Harbor. Who knows, but it is cool to see a new suit of armor. Please give us a unique variant of it. And that pattern I wanted you to take note of, look at this. It's on the left arm piece, and it also seems to be on the back of the chest piece. This set of armor is either some kind of child of Atom set of armor, or they have introduced a new armor paint, which will be the child of Atom paint, because that exact pattern we 
saw on the banners in the Child of Adam's base. And now, lo and behold, it's on the protagonist's armor. I'm not exactly a gun's expert, but I don't quite know what the protagonist is holding there as a weapon. It could be a shotgun, or we could all get our hopes up and think it's a new weapon. Given form. Here we are introduced to a new type of melee weapon. Now I'm no angler in real life and have zero fishing experience, but I can tell that the hook on this pole has pretty much 100% similarities to a normal sized fishing hook. Especially with the tip, the shape of the tip, the barb. I've just spent 10 minutes trying to look up giant hook on stick, bent harpoon, antique whaling tools, and I cannot find this thing anywhere on Google. So I don't know if this thing actually exists in real life, but I mean, if it did, it looks like something you stick into a fish that's still in the water, a big fish, and you then use the pole to help you drag it onto the boat. Again, I don't know if this shit really exists, but if it does, it's whatever that thing is. And I really hope that Bethesda gives us a unique variant of this, unlike the buzzsaw blade in the Automatron DLC. And if you do make a unique one, please put like five prongs on it or something, make it unique. Holy fog. Here we see a new type of ghoul that wears a necklace that is an old fishing net. I think he's also got some seaweed hanging off him. And right at the end of this shot, we see a tower in the background with a light on it. This could be a settlement that we can build on. This could be a base. I'm not too sure what this is or what that tower is. But the fact that there's a light on means that someone is there. Now in this next shot, we see a creature, an unknown creature. It looks like they've brought across from Morrowind the Guar. But what I think it actually is, is a gecko just like we saw in Fallout New Vegas. I mean, the shape of its head, its tail, the way it walks on its two hind legs. This thing is gecko for days. I know peace can still- So here we get a quite a big shot, a big cinematic landscape shot. First of all, this big building here seems to be some kind of observatory, just judging by the giant dome. And also that it's kind of at the top of a big hill or mountain, it's most certainly an observatory. Now this fellow here could be some kind of super duper new power mechanic to build at your settlement. A giant windmill. It's probably not, but it could be. And just quickly, look at the shape of the base. That's the thing we saw earlier in the video in the forest. The thing that got thicker quicker than any tree would. Something else I hopefully we should take note of. As everything in this shot gets further and further away, okay, so we got this kind of foreground stuff, the building, the observatory, the windmill, then it goes forest, then it goes another layer of forest, then it's blue. Then it goes back to black and seems to be more land mass. Hopefully this is an insight to the sheer scale of this DLC. The fact that they can put a big hill with forest on an island and then more sea and then more islands. So hopefully that's something to take note of and not just some shitty illusion. Be achieved. Here we see a big burning boat, which presumably is something to do with a quest as, you know, I don't think it's just been sitting there burning for years on end. Perhaps it has, who knows. Peace. Now here we're in a town and this guy says peace you call murdering one of our own peace. And as we can see, there's five people in the shot. One, two, three, four, five. You come. Then it very swiftly goes to the next shot where these two guys have their guns out and this guy over on the bottom right is dead. Or break dancing, or doing yoga, or becoming a contortionist. Those three last options are incredibly unlikely. Murdering one of ours. Although in this shot here, we do see five people running out of town. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's pretty sus that that dude was on the ground. And in case you wanted some, there is a souvenir shop. Peace. Here in this shot, we see two dudes shooting guns, and these are new guns. Now this shot is actually in slow motion, and the speed of the gun is still pretty quick. So I do think this is some kind of automatic machine gun weapon. A machine gun weapon, yes. Opposed to those non-weapon machine guns. Once again, admittedly, I am no weapons expert, but I want us to watch this a couple of times, and hopefully someone can tell us, but every time he shoots that kind of, I don't even know, the bigger barrel over the top of the smaller barrel moves back and forth when he shoots. See that? I don't know what kind of gun does that, but it does seem to be some kind of machine gun. An assault rifle perhaps? An SMG? An Uzi? An AK-47? An MP-44? A huge lack of knowledge on my part? Okay, now here we see this angler dude pop out of the ground. As we know, he's got this glowing fellow on his head. In the background there, amongst the reeds, we can see two more glowing fellows, so I think he's got some friends. Now, because this fellow's in the water, everyone assumes that it's some kind of Miloke. However, I think it's some kind of gecko. This dude on screen does actually look a lot like a Miloke 
king. However, Milo kings have webbed hands. As I think we can see, this guy does not have webbed hands. Yeah, definitely. Look, there's big gaps between the fingers. And I've actually had a gecko as a pet once, and they do have weird long fingers like this. Same with frogs, they have like two super long toes, shit like that. Anyway, I don't think this thing's a Milo. I think it is an equitously adapted gecko. But in all seriousness, this is a Murloc from World of Warcraft, 100%. Here, the gecko -y thing jumps out in a rage. It looks a little bit Creature of the Black Lagoony, and although it's completely out of focus, how awesome does the atmosphere of the background look? All right, now we're gonna look at pretty much every single frame of this scene here. First of all, look at the gun. What the hell is that? It's some kind of heavy weapon, I think. See how the left arm is holding like a handle with a, a like a thumb button trigger thing? So the obvious thing in this shot is this ridiculous creature that we're fighting, and I think this was that thing that was running through the swamp before earlier in the video that I said was kind of insectoid. My suspicions are 100% confirmed. Look at the shape of the arm. That is 100% just like the, the those mantis things we saw in Fallout New Vegas, which of course were heavily based off the prey mantis in real life. We can also see what seems to be a whole bunch of eyes or some kind of receivers, receptors, something suspicious that I don't want to have anything to do with on this thing's head. These green circles, and I'm pretty sure that black dot there is an actual eye eye. We do see it much closer a little bit later. As we can see, it's got the two antennae, antennas, whatever the plural of antenna is, antennaeus suspicious. And this thing in the middle is a mandible, the little mouthy tube thing that insects use to suck shit up. So in this shot here, we get a bit of a closer look at its head. So we have the black circle, which I do believe is an eye. Then there's these three green circles that just look sus as. We get another look at the mandible and there's a second mandible underneath. So rather like a blood bug, this thing could be like headbutting us and sucking our life from us, which to be honest, sounds like the scariest shit ever in a Fallout game. Can deal with a blood bug, but when it's a nine foot black tyranid prey mantis, no thank you. Look at that shit, it's going in for the suck. And I also want us to take note that the protagonist is actually reloading this gun or rechambering a bullet with um, an, like a lever action. So interesting, this could be a weapon, could be like a harpoon rifle, could be a heavy weapon. I'm not too sure what this is, but it looks intense. Careful. This could get out of hand. Okle dogle, back to the start. Now, as we know, I'm pretty sure Far Harbor is based on the conflict between the settlers, the people that live on Far Harbor, the island, the children of Atom, who we've already seen in the trailer, and the synths. I mean, straight away by the blue lighting, this is synth central. And if this is the synth base, then 100% the synth base is inside that observatory we saw earlier on in the trailer. As we can see, this guy here on the top left is a giant telescope. The room is also a dome, like every box is ticked. We also see this bloody eye robot in the middle here. Real fast. Who we then see here. Okay, where to start with this guy? So we know Nick Valentine came with us to Far Harbor. This guy is obviously a second generation synth, much like Nick Valentine. So people have made the connection that this is actually Nick Valentine who's been converted onto the synth side and is now possibly antagonist, protagonist, who knows? Friend or foe? I don't think so because when we go to the Institute, we learn that there are other second generation synths, just like Nick Valentine. So this could very easily be one of those synths. His skin tone or fake skin tone is is different to what Nyx is, and I do believe that this guy on screen here, his face is more complete than Nyx is. So I don't think this guy's Nick Valentine. I do believe he's the leader of the synths on this island, and the force behind the synth movement. I do feel, however, that there might be someone bigger behind this guy, just because this guy's ride has been pimped. The amount of cables and modifications, the amount of expensive amplifier tubes, he's got a volume button on his shoulder, he's got well, like a flamethrower muzzle coming out of the side of his head. So yeah, because this guy looks so heavily modified, who modified him? Probably someone else. And that someone else would probably modify this guy to his or her advantage. So although it may seem that this guy is the leader of the synths, I do feel that there's going to be someone else behind it. And then again, it goes out to Fallout 4, Far Harbor, with that kind of like, I don't know, 70s, 80s horror movie font, which is absolutely adorable. And the mist is also going across the screen, again, accentuating, highlighting that mist. So there we go, the trailer for Far Harbor, it's coming out. 
May 19th. 14 days in two weeks it's coming out. Early access would be great, Bethesda! <coughs> so just to recap, we come here with Nick Valentine, there's mist, something's in the mist, something's going on with this fog. We've got new creepy prey mantis super enemies, probably got geckos, what I think to be Aquidius geckos, they could be some offshoot of Milok, who knows. We've got new armor sets, new weapons, the hints of mutated whales, got the local people of Far Harbor, we have the synths, we have the children of Adam, we have very possibly the children of Atom armor paint. There is a whole bunch of very interesting stuff here, don't forget this is the big DLC. And this trailer is also short so this should only be a tiny glimpse into some of the great things that we can expect to see in this DLC. And there you have it, there is my in-depth analysis of the Far Harbor DLC trailer for Fallout 4. I hope you survived it, if you did see anything or you want to correct me on anything please do, I'm one man looking at foggy things that I probably don't know what they actually are. So if you know anything beyond what I do, please feel free to leave a comment. And with that, thank you very much for watching, thank you for sticking it out, I hope you learnt something and that you have come away a little bit wiser than you came. I've been Camel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.